so uh, here we are in the Cleveland factory and we've just got one of the first uh, brand new coas out of the mould and uh, luckily enough at the moment all the way from the States are designer and my brother Snowy who's um, he's been responsible for this little beauty so um, I thought I'd just find out a little bit more from him for you guys what it's all about um, what we had to do to kind of design the boat really um, to get to this little, uh, little beauty so Snowy from the start we kind of challenged you with some some ideas of what we needed from the boat. We wanted it sort of more compact, we wanted it lighter, um, but we also said you know, we wanted it to be stable, we wanted it for adults who were big and small. We wanted all the boxes ticked. So how many of them have you been able to do? I think we've really packed a lot into a really small space here. Um, it was challenging, absolutely, but working together as a team, we've, we've got to a great result. Um, we've got a nice, ample, spacious cockpit area with good different options for the feet. Um, a well-proportioned uh, seating area, which is nice and soft in the back, won't dig into, it could be used perfectly well and, without a seat. And that pack. needed a little bit of work because we, we, we had to kind of go through a few revisions just to make sure that sort of fitted a really wide range of people, got it, kept its shape, also drained as well. You know, what, what was the challenge in that one? Yeah, um, the idea of using it without a seat back initially, so it brought in some, some initial challenges. Um, we wanted it to be pretty well sculpted, but there's so many different sizes of people. Um, drainage, as you say, was, was key, so we've positioned these so your sit bones sit between the drain areas and we looked at that from different percentile sizes of people, but you still have great drainage, really good sort of um, stiffness in the, in the cockpit area and nice soft in the back here, so um, it keeps the sort of visual look, look that we were trying to go for, but it's not sort of um, overpowering when it comes to ergonomics. Some sit on tops tend to literally sit you right on top, quite a bit, bit of a platform, our, ho our hula model was exactly like that. Um, others tend to really sort of sit you right down inside, uh, which have the benefit of stability, but you, you kind of end up then not really being able to paddle. You know, where did you finish on that? Definitely walking a fine balance here. We didn't want a wet ride, so we didn't want to be sitting down super low in the boat, but we also wanted this thing to feel like the seat was sort of encompassing around you without using a seat pad. So we do have quite a deep seat well, um, and we've also got a wider platform here that gives you nice balance of stability, but still a, a, um, a nice dry ride. It drains out really nicely with this angled platform, so it will drain forwards into the foot well um, in the front of the feet, and then behind you, and then down under the, under the seat. Now, one of the kind of requests that we had was that the Paradise um, One model, uh, you know, it's popular, it's a great hull, but it does narrow up right at the bow in terms of your foot room, so it's, it's limiting how many people fit it. So, you know, we, we didn't let you make the boat any longer here, and we wanted the width and stability, but we needed more space for people's legs at the front. So, have you managed it? Yeah, we did. We actually carried the width in here. We've got some similarities to um, the Calypso model, but we've, we've taken some cues from there and then improved on that. So we've got plenty of width through the front here. We've got nice um, heel pegs and then toe pegs. So you've got that balance of being able to push on your heels and your toes for comfort. Um, and then we just kept it nice and open in the front. This is where the longest leg paddler is going to be. So we kept this area open. Um, quite sort of generic in its shape, although it has these features. So someone with a larger, a larger shoe or a wetsuit boot, or um, I think they call them sneakers, you can, uh, you can fit in there with those. So you've got your sneakers on, you sat down comfortably in here, um, you're just starting to paddle it around. Um, you know, let's, let's look here at the bow. You know, we've swept the bow up, um, we've got plenty of lift in there, um, and aesthetically we've tried to keep it, you know, some breadth in there. You know, what's, what's the advantage we're getting out of that? Yeah, it does a, a few things. It gives us some practicality with being able to have a paddle storage in here, so it keeps the bungee and the storage area nice and wide and, and proportioned. But particularly from a performance standpoint, it gives that wider bow the ability when you're paddling through small waves to stay a little bit of a dry ride. It'll paddle very, very well out through the surf, again, deflecting the waves to the side and not all coming in through the cockpit. Cool. Let's have a look at the business end, turn it over. Okay, so I'm going to do this as a pre-production boat, so we've got a little stuff coming off the mould, but let's just talk through um, you know, what makes this just a really good design. I mean, we, we brought some things that we know have been very popular in the Calypso and other models in here, but also challenged ourselves to improve on that. So let's talk about stability and just sort of general dynamic through the water. We've got what looks like a double pontoon sort of hull, so how does that work? Yeah, as you mentioned, stability is key in a boat like this. We want to give that new paddler a great first experience, so having really good stability is, is really important. So we carry plenty of width through the midsection and then swept that through to get that wider bow, as we mentioned, for going out through surf and through, um, through river waves, um, and then also to keep that, that foot room. 
We've also had this really nice long keel, um, and that's really helping with uh, with tracking. It's a fine balance between a maneuverable boat and a tracking boat. And so, you know, what we've done is we've kept the the keel long through the tail. Um, that gives you uh, the ability to take fewer strokes and actually travel and track in a nice straight line. And and that was definitely a, you know a challenge we gave you as a designer. It was like the person that's not paddled this or not paddled at all should be able to get in this boat and just go forward straight away without having to adjust anything and just paddle. But still, if they then want to advance, move, or if they, if they paddled a bit more and surf, play around, it will let them do it. So I guess that proportion between these areas is critical. Yeah, it is. Um, you've got um, tracking uh, through, the, through the midsection, then your stability um, slightly towards the outside. And then that's all combined with the overall curvature of the boat, which is going to give you that maneuverability. So all of those factors came into play here, um, trying to keep a boat that you know, the, the, the beginner paddler can enjoy right, right away, have that confidence and stability, and then still have some fun on it. Um, no matter the size of paddler, this is a boat that you take it to the beach for the day and all the family can jump on and have a great time. And the relationship between the kind of the, the, the sidewall and the rail here in terms of stability, how that sits in the water and gives people the confidence, that, that's quite an important critical area, particularly just behind the seat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we carry the whip through the uh, through behind the paddler as well. So if you're putting anything in the rear tank while it loads it down slightly, you've still got that, that ability to have um, a nice stable platform. If you're actually a smaller adult and maybe you have a very small child with you on the water, um, then you, you can also, uh, the, the product can manage that as well. Um, and we kept the upstream bow because then that means we can you know, pu push it out through surfing if you're taking off on a wave, so it keeps it quite dry really across the bow, I guess was the, the plan with that one. Yeah, it was. This, uh, this concave shape through the bow, then also, as you say, the, up, the upsweep really allows you to paddle out through, um, through waves and surf. Um, makes it easy just to paddle straight out, turn around and enjoy that wave and that surf experience coming back in. Just one final thing before I flip it over. What's going on with the alien invasion look here? What, 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 what's, <laughs> what's the benefit of that? Why is it these like that? these are our, our speed gills through here. Now these, um, these are the drainage ports, we call them scuppers. Um, this basically provides not only stiffness to the boat as, as a um, single chain of boat, but also allows drainage from the footwell, from the seat, well, seat area and the tank well. Um, we stylize them to sort of give a sense of speed and to have that surfy sort of look, and also to fit in with the new aesthetic that we've brought to the Islander range. Cool, let's get back to the comfort end. Okay, so we, we've kind of had a look at the, um, you know, the basic shell design here. Um, what are we, around 255 on this one, aren't we, in the length of this? Exactly, 255, yeah. yeah. So, um, the, the other sort of side of the design challenge for you was then to just bring in a whole new componentry set for Islander, um, and, and that will be integrated across the Islander line as we develop it. So, you know, what, what have we done there? Why is it better than what we use at the moment? You know, it looks good, but tell us a bit more about it. Yeah, a lot of attention to detail. I mean, one of the things that drove it um, as well is, is new branding. So we were, we've got a whole new branding um, concept here, both in the Islander word mark and in the Ulu logo mark that we're carrying. The whole backstory behind that we won't get into just at this point. But we've, we've carried that into these new components. So they're Islander design components. They are proprietary to all of our new boats going forwards, and they're exclusive to the brand. Um, from there, we sort of looked at what we needed um, in terms of what's simple, what can be a multi-use fitting, and then you know how does that fit in with our newest aesthetic and look. So handles injection molded. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We've got um, uh, injection molded, um, highly durable. Um, we tested these with different sort of FEA model and analysis, so highly durable handles. So compare that to say a molding or say a webbing rope. You know where? What? Why? Why not? Yeah, I mean, it, one of the, the big things is it gives us more of an aesthetic point, so we can actually make these a, an aesthetic value, rather than it being sort of moulded in as part of the boat, so we can actually bring some styling elements into here, we can bring our own branding into it. Um, we've also designed these to be extremely ergonomically com comfortable, so from different angles, whether it's being used as a side suitcase handle or a stern handle, we've got soft corners, soft edges, um, it can be used by different hand sizes, so we've really sort of studied you know, what the optimal size would be. And we've orientated them, so we've more or less got a drag handle down there at the stern, suitcase style handles here, which will allow you to basically make it very easily car toppable, and then again a, a nice simple drag handle in at the front. So, you know, the idea I'm, I'm really with this one is that any family member can just get hold and move the boat around. It's easy to get on top of the car and, and so on. So, yeah, it's a, it's a nice feeling handle. Uh, there's a few other components we've done, it's obviously new um, 
D-rings, we've done new encapsulation for the, for the bungees. Um, it's completely look, you know, they're, they're all proprietary. I mean, it's been a big project just to do injection. They don't seem much, but there's a lot of work goes into them, I know. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the, uh, the things we were looking for is to make them multifunctional components as well. So we've, we've looked at where we can hide away um, different um, knot details, make a very clean aesthetic through the bow, so you won't see any rope knots in the bow area. Same through the, the midship here. So made these, these components um, not only practical for what they need to do, very durable as well, but also multifunctional and they, they give this overall aesthetic um, that really uh, is, is Islander's own look. And it will fit any of the Islander or the palm um, seat backs that we've got at the moment, we've got the attachment points for that so that it, it can retrofit the seat if people want to. Um, the hatch, obviously this one's a prototype, but we've also done a design job on, on this one as well. Um, it, what was this sort of challenge? What did you want to overcome there? What have you seen with others that you didn't like? Yeah, um, various things here. We obviously wanted again to bring our visual cues into it so it actually fits some of the other stylistic elements of the of the um, smaller components. We also put some, some ribs in here so it's, it's easy to grip for, uh, for undoing, a nice sort of um, neutral hand position so it can be unscrewed very easily. One of the things we realized, especially from beach use, is that um, different thread styles uh, typically tend to jam up and, and don't function. So we've got a nice coarse open thread here, makes it very easy for attaching and detaching. Um, simple few, few screws and it seals down on the watertight silicon seal. Cool. Uh, what's this thing at the front? Ah, that, that's a cool little feature. Um, everyone obviously wants to, their, their, um, their moment of fame and so this allows you to uh, attach a POV camera into a preset insert. It's a little um, camera logo around there to remind you where you can put it. Um, you can put a, uh, any form of POV camera on there and capture your day on the water, either yourself surfing and tearing it up, or family members. Um, you can face it forwards, you can face it backwards and just have a, have a great time and capture those memories. Cool. Uh, so we've got storage here. Let's finish on the storage uh, hatch at the back then. So the fairly classic shaped storage hatch here. We've kept it pretty simple, uh, I guess. Anything, anything particular to talk about with that one? Yeah, I think one thing we've managed to do is have quite a lot of width and, and depth in here. You've got to watch how much volume you're cutting away, and particularly in surf areas, this starts to fill up with, with water, but it's got lots of spacious storage. Um, we've put some a relative simple bungee rigging here in here, but it's very practical as well. You can, you can um, keep it items secure under here. You can clip into, into these locations. You can clip into these locations here if you need to. But also we put in, again, some branding, some stylistic, element, stylistic elements they give you stiffness and rigidity to these areas as well. Nice. Uh, it's looking a nice boat. Are you happy with it? It's been a really fun project, yeah. Yeah, we work together, you know, there's a great team here, there's a really, really good crew of people. Um, it's, it's come from, from various different angles to, uh, to get to where we are here. Um, different prototypes and different uh, solutions to the problems we were faced with. Um, but yeah, really exciting project and really looking forward to seeing people enjoying it on the water. Cool. And so we're tuning these in at the moment. We're going to have the sports spec, which is what we're sort of looking at here. The beach spec, just to be clear on that one, is basically identical without the hatch. There is a difference in weight. The beach spec is a, is a, is a heavier weight boat. The sports spec is a slightly lighter version. Um, so I think most people will be going for the sports spec um, once we get them up and running. Um, but this is an exciting start to this new island, the brand and its development and what we're going to be looking for in the future. We've got new models under the way for this, but right now it's um, fresh, clean and fun. Well done. Thanks.